Okay, guys, welcome to Thoughts from the Pastor uh, for this week. And uh, I'm kind of excited about this one. Um, <clears throat> and so I'm going to jump into it. I don't want this to be long, but I pray that you're having a good and a godly week. And I pray that this is a good challenge for you. This was a challenge for me. Okay, so I'm reading Psalms. And I'm going to read you just a couple of verses in Psalms 119. And it's in um, Hyota, uh, verse, which is uh, starts in verse uh, 73 and says this. Your hands made me and formed me. Give me understanding to learn your commands. May those who fear you rejoice when they see me, for I have put my hope in your word. What an incredible uh, word from the Lord, hey? Uh, I, when I read that, I was just like, the thought, okay, so I'm not David, and this is likely David writing this, right? And and so he's saying that when those that fear the Lord see the king, they they praise the Lord because they know that like their king, their leader, their governor is, um, you know, the guy that leads their country is honoring the Lord and there should be, I mean, they should rejoice. I think we would rejoice if we, uh, you know, if, if Trudeau uh, came to know Jesus Christ and began to lead from a biblical perspective, right? I think we would, we would be greatly rejoicing. But I want to bring this home for you and, and for me, okay? So we're not kings. But when people see us, when we, um, uh, when we uh, kind of get into this, um, you know, uh, when we walk into a situation, when we, uh, when we move towards or open the door and walk into a room, do the people that fear the Lord rejoice when we enter into, you know, into, into whatever, right? Like, do they, do they rejoice when we come in? Now, whether that's like, and I'm thinking not just a room, but like a room too, but let's say a situation, right? Let's say someone's, um, you know, there's, there's a, there's a issues going on in the church, right? And, um, and someone has a meeting, okay? They have a meeting and they're like, you know, we need to meet and to talk about this. When you, when they say, when they walk into the room and they see that you're sitting at, at the table, that you've been invited, do they go... Oh, awesome. You know, Adam's here. And I, I'm, I just, Lord, thank you. Because he's, he's a man of God. Like, you know, I have to ask myself that question, right? Like, do people say that? How about you? Think about that. When, when people walk into a room and, and there's tension in the room or there's something going on and they see you, does it bring them joy? Are they like, thank you, Lord, that this person's there because... You know, they they know your will. They walk with you. They they're honorable. They they will fight for what is right. Or or do or or do people go? Oh my goodness! Oh no! Oh boy! Oh, ah, I see how this is gonna go, right? Or is that is that people's response? Uh, when 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 um when someone walks into service. And they see, you know, that you're you're going to be a part of service, or you're even just in the room. Are they like, yes, it's good to see that person, Lord? Thank you that this person is a part of this church, a part of this gathering, a part of the family of God. Thank you, Lord God. When people see you uptown, are people going, hey, you know, like, are they are they blessed, and are they are they are they thanking the Lord that they had opportunity to interact with you? May those who fear you, those who fear you, those who have who have a, a proper and a healthy fear of the Lord and who walk in Jesus Christ, if this is a New Testament kind of thing, right? Uh, we would say those who fear the Lord and walk in Christ. Um, may they rejoice when they see me. Man, that is a prayer, right? That is a that is a amazing prayer to be praying. And why, why, look, look what it says. Look what it says here. Uh, just in verse uh, 20, 20, 74. May those who fear you rejoice when they see me, for I have put my hope in your word, right? For I trust in God and his word. So when people re see me, they rejoice because my engagement with the world around me is one that is first and foremost rooted in my trust in God and my trust in his word and putting that first. 
Uh, let, let, listen to what the, the passage says before it. Do good to your servant according to the word of the Lord. This is his prayer. Teach me knowledge and good judgment, for I trust your commands. Do people rejoice when you come into the situation because you have knowledge and good judgment concerning the things around you because your life is rooted and your thoughts are rooted and your heart is rooted in God and his word and in truth. Um, man, that is such an important prayer here. So this is, this, I've read some of the, some of the, some of the passages that I want to share with you are like, are you this kind of person? Because I think this kind of person, people would rejoice. And it's such a, it's like a prayer for me to be like, God, I want to be this person. James 3, 17 says this, James 3, 17 says this, but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all, pure, then peace loving considerate, submissive, full of mercy, and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Right? Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Now, are you that kind of person? Are you that kind of person that people rejoice when they know that you're, you're a part of the situation somehow? That someone has asked you to, to comment, so someone has asked you to share, that someone has asked you to be a part of what's going on. Do people say, thank you, Lord, for this incredible man of God, for this incredible woman of God? Right? And I think that this has to, to be a part of it, being wise in biblical wisdom. Biblical wisdom in the Lord is, but the wisdom that comes from heaven is, first of all, pure, then peace-loving considerate, submissive, full of mercy um, and good fruit and partial, impartial and sincere. Right? Are you that? Are you a peacemaker who sows in peace? And are you, or do you reap harvests of righteousness because of it? I think of Philippians 1, um, 111 is another kind of I, I think when I think of what I would need to be to be a blessing to others to such a degree that they 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 are they praise the Lord when when I when they see me, I can't really see that happening. Uh, but like I want to be that. Uh, for, first, uh, Philippians sorry one nine to um, I'm going to read uh, eleven. It says, and this is my prayer that you that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight. Do people praise the Lord because you're a part of the situation or when they see you because your uh, love abounds more and more in knowledge and depth of insight and that so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. Are you able? Are you one who walks with God in such a way that you are able to discern what is best? And that you're pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness uh, that comes from Jesus Christ to glory and pray to the glory and praise of God. Is that is that you? So you're not doing this. You're not like I want people to like me or I want people to be blessed when I'm around because I I like I want that image. No no no. You you have that image because you desire people to look to heaven and say praise the Lord. Man, it would be so awesome just to, to, to be that kind of person and to live live with Christ so closely that when, when, when you enter into a situation, people don't go, oh boy, here we go. Now we're going to see what Adam wants, or now we're going to see what whoever you are, right? Whoever's listening, whatever your name is. Now we're going to see what they want, what they have in mind, what they have to say. No, no, no. That they look to heaven and say, thank you, Lord, for this man. Thank you, Lord, for this woman. And just, yeah, I'm just, I'm so thankful because this situation, oof, but that person's here and God just be praised. Man, to live a life like that. Uh, James 1, I think would have to be a part of it too. You would have to live in this, this understanding, be a part of James 1, 19 to 20. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires, right? This is, we would have to be this more and more. I think of Galatians 5, right? And I think this is hugely key. Galatians 5, 22. You guys know what I'm going to say. Um, and I've, I've done little Bible studies on all of these in, in, from time to time. But, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, forbearance. 
right? Forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and its desires. Okay, here. so here's a question. When you walk into the room, when you're a part of a conversation, do people hear more about God and about his goodness, or do people hear about your passions and your desires? And like earthly passions, earthly desires, is that... Is that kind of the intention or the direction you aim with your life? That others see, okay, this is about your passions and your desires. This isn't about God. And I think, guys, if we want to be the kind of people where those who fear God and love Jesus praise God when they see us because of our our interaction will mean glorifying the Lord and not and not ourselves, then we have to be make sure we're not the people that when we enter the room or we enter a conversation or we enter into anything that that it's that, you know, behind the scenes, we're trying to work things towards our passion and work things towards our desires. That our intentionality is working things towards God's passion and working things towards God's desires. And God's passion, guys, is to save the lost and mature the saved. He is passionate for the salvation of his children. That's us. That's all of us. That's what he desires. His desire is that none should perish, but all come to a saving relation, come into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ, right? It says, it continues, Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Well, how can they get what they want? I want what I want. Man, I see that all the time. It doesn't matter the age you're at. If you like this and someone else is doing that, well, I want to do more of this, right? And, that, and then that's in the church, guys. It's little things, right? Like, think about it. It's like hymns over over worship music. It's it's chairs over pews. It's blue over red. It's it's their their department gets a little bit more money than mine. Well, then I'm gonna. How come I don't this? And it's it's um, it's it's arguments with your wife, right? And, and with your husband, right? Well, you said this. Well, you did that. Well, how come I can't get? Well, how come we can't watch this one? How come all the little fights we have with our husbands and wives and little things with our kids and guys? It's we we engage in these things all the time and we wonder well. Why aren't we a blessing? Because we're, we're pursuing our own passions and desires often. So going back, so these are some of the things that we need to be aware of and thinking of. Guys, so back to the main topic. I want to ask you, what do you think your people's thoughts are when you enter into the room? What do you think uh, people's thoughts are when you enter into the situation? Let's say it's, uh, well, whatever kind of situation it is. Are people like, ah? Oh, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord that this person is here because they, they walk with the Lord. They're going to bring into this situation, they're going to bring light. They're going to bring God's wisdom. They're going to bring knowledge. And it's going to help us to, to better understand where God wants us to go. Or, or we're going to bring into this situation an, a, a, a focus on God. And his purposes, rather just to focus on us. What are your thoughts when it comes to what people think about you when when you enter into the situation? King David prays, right, in Psalm 74 here. In, uh, oh, where is it? Let me find it. Sorry, I lost it. I thought I said 74. I'm sorry, 107. Sorry, 119. Forgive. In 119, he says... Sorry, let me find it. Here we go. Yes. 73. Your hand made me and formed me. Give me understanding to learn your commands. May those who fear you rejoice when they see me, for I have put my hope in your word. The, uh, if that's not one of your prayers, guys, I would pray that you make that your prayer, that the people around you who fear the Lord, who love Jesus Christ, who put their trust in him, that when they see you, 
that they look to heaven and they thank the Lord for you being a part of what's going on. I pray, I pray that for me, man. Oh, I know God has a lot of work to do yet before maybe that that's true. Um, I pray that that would be true already. That would have to be an act of God. But he can do it. He can do the impossible. But I pray that we think about that, that we ponder what are people's response to me getting into the situation? Do I just make things worse? Or do I bring about a calm and a spirit and, and, and the fruit of the spirit of, 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 of godly focus and, and peace loving and, and gentleness and understanding and wisdom? Do I bring that to the table when I get involved in things? Or do I just kind of say what I think and do what I think's best and tell people what, what should happen because I think that that's the way it should be? Or is there truly a God-ordained presence, a Holy Spirit-empowered presence um, when I come into the room because I'm focused on God's things and I want God to be honored and I'm walking in His wisdom and I'm le being led by the Holy Spirit. Is that what's going on in my life? So guys, I leave you with the question. What are people thinking, right? When you enter the situation, do they look to heaven and say, God, be praised. Thank you for this man. Thank you for this man. Jesus, I thank you for working in him, working through him. I thank you that he's a part of this. Um, women, you too, right? What, what are people thinking? And then that should challenge our own hearts to be like, okay, what am I thinking? What am I doing? Am I where I need to be? Am I engaging some of these passages like uh, James 3.17, Philippians 1.7, James 1.19 and 20, and Galatians 5.22 and 27? Am I, am I where I need to be to be a blessing to the people around me in this way? Guys, I hope you are. I hope you are. Uh, have a great week. I pray this challenges you. And guys, pray about it. Pray about it. Get, get on your knees in prayer. If there's some repentance that needs to happen, don't just relent. Don't just say, no, I'm going to stop doing that. No. Don't just stop doing stuff. Actually go to the Lord and say, God, I'm sorry. I was wrong. Please forgive me. That's that's the heart of repentance. God, I'm sorry. One, I was wrong. That's a hard one, but that needs to happen too. I was wrong. And number three, Lord God, please forgive me. And then let God work in you. Let him show, pray that he shows you the things that needs to do so that when people see you that are God-fearing men and women of Jesus Christ, that they are blessed and that they look to heaven and that they praise God that you're a part of whatever's going on. Guys, have a great and God-filled week.